Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to Ireland once again and we're going to revisit one of the breweries that you saw me review for the first time just a couple of videos ago. And I was very, very impressed with the last beer that I had from these guys. And it was very quirky, not what I expected at all. And that makes me very curious to see what this one has in store as well. So for this review, we are going to return to Letterkenny in County Donegal in the very northwestern part of the island. And we're having a taste of my second beer from Kinnegar Brewing. So this one is the Black Bucket and they're describing it as a Black Rye IPA. It comes in at 6.5% and uh, it's supposed to be pretty good this one. So if you check out the untapped and rate beer page for this, they're listing it as a Black IPA. Um, dark Cascadian Dark, so it's a style that I really quite enjoy, but I have to say it's the very first time that I've come across any beer that has black rye in it. The last beer that I reviewed from these guys was the Rust Bucket, which they described simply as a rye ale. Um, it wasn't what I expected at all, but it came across very, very nicely. And of course, one of the, the real unusual things about this brewery is the fact that they're saying they're a farmhouse brewery. This is the first farmhouse Irish brewery that I've come across. Normally, you would associate these kind of styles with the likes of the Belgium Saison. Uh, back home in Scandinavia there's a lot of these fake IPAs coming out, the old Norwegian farmhouse yeast from Voss coming into things too. So really interesting to find a brewery like this in Ireland and uh, I'm sure this will be another really quite quirky beer. Big shout out as well to Paul Rogers who's running an, I an import company into Scotland. He's importing lots of Irish whiskies and uh, beers and other products as well. He gave me this beer to review on the channel so a huge thank you to him for making this review and my other Irish ones possible. So yeah, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Kinnegar Brewing before. Hopefully I can add some more in the fairly near future. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefix or whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Irish beers that I've reviewed for you, including both those from the North and from the Republic. That's being added to whenever I get the opportunity. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is massively appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Kinnegar Brewing then. So as I mentioned to you earlier on, Kinnegar Brewing are based in County Donegal in the very North northwestern part of the island of Ireland and the company was founded officially back in 2011 and then opened its doors in July of 2013 under the guidance of Rick Levert and Libby Carton. So Rick comes from a background in design and marketing. He'd worked in business for a good number of years and in his spare time he'd also dabbled in home brewing and around 2011 he decided that he wanted to turn professional and he took some brewing courses at the University of California Davis over in America and at VLB Berlin uh, over in Germany as well. Um, it didn't actually say in any of the articles that I found what Libby did but I know that she takes part in the brewing these days and also manages a little bit of the business side of things too but I couldn't find out what her pre-brewery background was unfortunately. Um, so the original brewery that these guys had was in a little village called Rathmullen and it had a capacity of around 10,000 hectolitres and from the beginning they were bottling their beers but they grew very very quickly to the point where their brewing schedule really became unsustainable. Apparently they were running from 4am in the morning until midnight just to actually meet the demand for their beers and the contracts that they had. So in that time I would guess that you're running either three or four brews per day which is just crazy. They were using two shifts to actually do this. But they later moved to Letterkenny uh, in a brewery that they've, they've dubbed K2 in March of 2017 and this one has a 35,000 hectolitre capacity and it's also allowed them to produce more special and one-off brews as well. But the big marketing point for this brewery, as I mentioned earlier, is the fact that they say they're a farmhouse brewery so their beers are unfiltered, unpasteurised and carbonated naturally in the primary fermentation. If you go on their website it shows you a, good, it shows you a nice list of all their core beers but they do have a few kind of one-off things as well. This particular beer was listed in the sort of one-off pilot brew things but it did look as if their website maybe hasn't been updated for a little while because the artwork um 
on there was considerably different from what you're getting on the cans now. Um, but as of September 2019, when I'm filming this review for you, they've produced roughly around 50 different types of beer, according to the Untapped page. So um, yeah, that's all you really need to know about Kinnegar Brewing for the moment. If you want to learn more, of course, you can check out the brewery website in the description below. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram, and that'll keep you up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can check out the Untapped and uh, Rate Beer pages, and that'll give you the list of all the different beers that they done but in fairness the brewery website does seem to have a good number of these listed there too but yeah I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork of this one then before we open up there you can see the little dog kind of sticking his head into the bucket which is kind of cool I'm not I forget the the actual breed of this dog I don't know if it's meant to be like a little border terrier or an Irish terrier or uh, something like that but nice little dog there Tells you a little bit on the back here. It says Farmhouse Beers from Donegal. Uh, at Kinnegar, we pair brewing tradition with a contemporary sense of adventure to produce clean, crisp, full flavoured beers. The brewery is named after the beach beside its birthplace, just to the north of Rathmullen in County Donegal on Ireland's wild Atlantic Way. Black Bucket is the bigger, darker brother to our Rust Bucket Rye and balances rye and roasted malts with fresh hop flavours and aromas. So, um, yeah. Nicely presented. Um, it does seem to have won. It's won uh, a gold medal at the Brussels Beer Challenge in 2018 too. So I mean, it must be a pretty damn good beer. That's quite impressive actually for an Irish brewery to go over there and take away a medal from a Belgian beer festival. On the back there, there you can see the Kinnegar brewing symbol. Just trying to hold that steady for you. And you can see that left hand isn't working. You can see that on the front of the, the can as well but yeah really nice to present you this one nice minimalist artwork i think they sold their beers in half liter bottles originally and then in 330s but now they've got them in these 440 milliliter um tall boy cans so um yeah it says this one was packaged on the 10th of july 2019 and it's best before july 2020 so yeah as you can see there's another little thing there that's quite interesting the irish uh, craft beer symbol that must be a little collective thing that they've got over there independent Irish craft beer so um, yeah it doesn't say what hops and malts are in this one I checked the website earlier too and it didn't say exactly what was in there but um, we'll see if we can guess when we're having a look at this but without further ado let's get it out and we'll get on with the tasting then a 6.5% black rye IPA from Donegal so yeah nice little bit of fruity notes coming out of this one as you open the beer up but let's get it out into the glass and have a closer look at it. It's pouring a really nice mahogany, chestnutty colour this beer. I've poured about two thirds of it into the glass. That should be enough for us to have a little look at for the moment. So yeah, in terms of appearance then, this beer, if I put the light through it, it actually comes across as a really dark, uh, rosewoody colour and if, you, if there's a little bit of light coming through the edge of it it's almost got a bit of a kind of coca-cola coloured ruby edge to it you can see there's a solid finger and a little bit of a frothy I would say light beige almost mocha coloured head to be honest with you one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass a few little ones heading up towards the bottom of that head there but you know if you consider this beer as a black IPA as untapped was nothing overly surprising about its appearance if I put the light through it again this beer is definitely um, hazy you know it's unfiltered so that is to be expected that's a common property if you like of the farmhouse beers but yeah nothing overly surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance when you consider what it is so let's take a look at the aroma and just see how we get on Ooh, that smells really nice actually right I'm going to hazard a guess with this beer and say that maybe there is a little bit of cascade in here. I wouldn't be surprised if they've maybe used a little bit of Simcoe or Citra just from the way the, the aroma's coming out with this too. Um, maybe there could be a bit of Williamette. Um, and yeah, the reason that I'm saying these hops is that um, if you use Simcoe in a beer where there's dark malt, it really gives you these very sharp, juicy, red fruity notes. and. Um, it really has that coming out of it straight away. When you go in and smell the aroma of this beer, you've got a really nice, sharp, almost plummy, sort of raisiny note coming out of this one. But at the same time, you've still got some of that citrus kind of lingering there, which is really interesting. Um, I don't think they would have used Mosaic. I've seen Mosaic is getting more popular in black IPAs these days, but there is definitely a sort of citrusy element to this one too. 
Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if there's a bit of Citra or I think I'm more leaning towards saying Simcoe with this one. I always like to guess the hops with these beers. Um, but yeah, it's got a lovely big sharp red fruity character in the beginning. Raisins, plums, and then it just smooths out a little bit and becomes that little bit more kind of juicy. There's definitely a sort of figgy blackberry kind of quality to this one. I think when I was saying Will You Met earlier on, I think that might be a little bit off the mark. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some Cascade in here though, because you can smell that distinctive floral quality that you get from Cascade, you know, the original um, IPA hop from Yakima in uh, Washington in America. You can really pick up a little bit of that here and that will be contributing to some of that nice, almost berryish quality you get out of this beer. But the fruits, as I say, nice and sharp in the beginning, but then when your nose starts to saturate a little bit toward that aroma, it does become a little bit lighter and more uh, and more juicy. So yeah, raisins and plums in the beginning, and then more of a kind of um, berryish, you know, um, not quite as tar uh, tart and sharp that you would expect from raspberries. A little bit more kind of blackberry and uh, and figgy in the flavor in the aromas, if you like. So yeah, um, in terms of the malty side of the beer, then. It's very, very kind of bready. You can really smell that nice sort of rye, brown bready quality in there. I was a huge fan of the German rye breads when I was living in Heidelberg in Germany. I do miss the German bakeries, but you can really get that nice, almost German rye bread quality out of this beer. Um, it did say on the can that there's wheat malt in here, so that will be kind of smoothing, smoothing the aroma out a little bit. Um, but it's really nice how that whole aroma... Um, goes together here. Lovely kind of smooth breadiness there, brown bready qualities. It's almost a little bit like a well-fired bread crust as well. You know, if you think about a hedgehog roll and the very edge of it, if it comes out really, really big and toasted, it's definitely got a little bit of that to it. Um, there's maybe a little bit of a caramelly note to this one. The sweetness is kind of drowned out a little bit by the more roasty elements of the of the aroma though, but definitely a little bit of a sweet brown sugar in there. No chocolate or anything like that. Definitely no chocolate. Um, and it's got a nice kind of lighter biscuity quality to it as well, but that's very, very minimal. Um, it does come across really nicely, that. Um, you might be forgiven for just thinking there's a little woody uh, undertone to this beer as well, and that's quite common when it comes to these farmhouse beers. In terms of the green side of the hops, I would say there's a good little bit of, um, there's a little touch of earthiness in there. Um, there's a good little bit of a quite spicy floral aromaticity and it, as I say I think it's quite distinctive of Cascade. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a bit of Cascade in here but you've also got a little bit of a lighter kind of grassy note in there but in terms of the green side of the hops to me it really leans towards a slightly spicy floral aromaticity which gives you a good blend with that kind of nice rye quality. I'm guessing that normally black rye is just kind of, it might well be a slightly different variety of rye in fairness but I'm guessing when they're calling it black rye, it will give you a slightly more kind of toasty, roasty type flavour, to be honest. So, um, yeah, it's a very nice smelling beer. Take a little bit of time and enjoy it for yourself. Enjoy the aroma for yourself, rather. And uh, that's always half the experience when it comes to these craft beers. But let's have a taste of this one then and see how we get on. This one is the Black Bucket, a black rye IPA from Kinnegar Brewing in Letterkenny, Donegal, over in Ireland. Let's get stuck in. Slanja, skull. Yeah, that's another really, really nice beer. And, um, you know, one of the things, and I said this in the, the Rust Bucket review as well, you always associate rye with being, you know, a little bit spicy and things like that, but I think they've got this whole idea of balancing the rye out and just making the beer really smooth. Um, these guys have got that down to an absolute T. And it's quite a difficult thing that, I mean, I've had a good few rye IPAs and stuff like this, and they, they've just... They've been some of them have been really good, but in fairness, quite a few of them have just been very kind of meh. You know, you wouldn't, you don't know if you would want them again. But the two rye beers I've had from these guys have been really kind of very, very good. I mean, if anyone asked me for a a brewery that was brewing right nice rye beers, I'd definitely point them in the in the direction of this one. This is probably one of their best rye beers that I've tried before. The most recent one is, that I think I can I've come across is the Albino Squid Assassin, which was one of the brew dog beers over here. That's the most recent one I can think of reviewed. So do give me some rye beer recommendations in the comments section below. I need to explore this style a little bit more because you don't see too many of these anymore, to be honest with you. But 
but yeah really really nice that so let's try and break this flavor down a little bit for you and describe it so straight away with this beer you can feel that nice smooth um, bready quality that blankets the middle of your tongue that nice smooth German rye bread quality in there and it thickens up the further that you go into the aftertaste it comes across and just blankets your tongue and then thickens up the further you go into it and um, the further you go into the aftertaste as well you can feel it just drying out a little bit and that's when you get the more kind of roasty toasty elements pushing their way out of the beer. That would be the black side of the beer. Um, but overall, it's a very smooth black IPA, this one. I really like it. It's almost a little bit like if you take, um, if you think about a German Schwarz beer, or more accurately, I guess, a Czech Tmavi, the Czech lager beers are always quite well known for having that very smooth, bready base. I would kind of describe this beer as being like a black IPA, but with that check base to it. I think that's a good way to describe this and I was thinking, I don't know if I mentioned that in the Rust Bucket review, but when I thought about it afterwards, these beers, it almost comes across as if they're a little bit check inspired and I'd be curious to know if that's the case, but to me, almost, the, the base of this beer really is like a Czech Tmavi, or, um, which is the Czech equivalent of a German Schwarz beer, a little bit more bready than their German counterparts, um, but yeah. It really is very nice, that smoothness there. Um, and the more you drink of it, the more it kind of smooths out too. You really get more of that brown bready, almost wholemeal quality in the, the centre of your palate too. If you go to the very, very centre of your tongue, you've got a nice kind of oily, caramelly quality there. It's maybe very slightly toasted, but to me it does lean a little bit more towards the sweeter side of things. And it's, again, it's quite similar. The, the feel that this beer gives you, is very similar to the the rust bucket, um, the rust bucket rye ale that I reviewed for you before. This one is a little bit higher in alcohol. I think that one was like five point one or five point two percent, but this one has very much the same kind of vibe to that, and it works very very well. And um, the further you go out from the centre of your palate, you'll maybe get a little bit of a biscuity note to this one. But again, the further you go into the aftertaste, more of that bready smoothness just sits there. You can get a little bit of the roasty and um, black malt in there. But really it's the smoothness that kind of takes over the flavour in this one. The way that the malt base in this beer goes together is really top class. And of course the yeast that they'll be using in here will contribute to that a little bit as well. I do wonder if it's house yeast strains that they're using or if they've, they've probably bought one originally and then kind of developed their own from there. But yeah, that's the malt base in this beer really is very very nice so big thumbs up to uh, to Kinnegar for the way this has turned out I think the further you go into the aftertaste as well you will pick out a little bit of those woody flavours and um, I don't know if I'd go as far with this one as to say there's a bit of a kind of nutty undertone to it but if you go to the very centre of your tongue and then just come forward a little bit you might pick up a few sort of nutty flavours to the beer as well back corners of the palate you've got a nice little bit of a I can, you've definitely got a good bit of earthiness in there. Um, you know, it could it be Summit that they've used in here. Summit would be the other hop that is uh, quite popular there as well. But definitely a nice little bit of earthiness in the back corners of the palate. That spreads forward a little bit. It maybe becomes slightly herbal, but in the front corners of the palate, you've got a nice floral aromaticity. It's nowhere near as kind of spicy as you would think uh, when you smell the aroma of the beer. It's not quite as pronounced as you would you would originally believe. But around the very front curve of the tongue, it's just that little bit lighter and grassy. Then behind the front curve of the palate, there's that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer. But yeah, I really like how this, this beer goes together. This is definitely one of these ones where um, none of the flavours are overly kind of punching their weight if you like it's just all about how everything blends together and i think you know that was what i complimented the uh, the rust bucket on as well they've got that down to a t um so behind the front curve of the tongue you get that little oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer and for me in the beginning this one Kind of, it comes across with a little bit of sharpness, you know, you've got this little kind of slightly plummy, raisiny sharpness and then it just rolls out and starts to become a little bit more kind of juicy. So on the juicier side of the, the fruits, yeah, on the juicier side of the fruits, I would say that it's more 
it starts to lean towards the figgy side of things, but definitely a bit of a kind of blackberry quality too. There could be a little bit of Willamette in this one, maybe Summit Willamette. Um, something like that in here, and I do think a, perhaps a little bit of Cascade as well. I would, I think it's some the hops that are in here are kind of one or something along those lines. I think the hop bill is something like that, um, but it really suits the beer. The further you go into the aftertaste, you can feel some more of those roasty um, black malts just pushing their way up a little bit. The thickness of the bready qualities just lingers there too. Some of the earthiness is there, and the juicier side, that blackberry kind of figgy note that comes out of the beer is uh, is quite apparent too but very very well balanced beer this one and I certainly wouldn't hesitate to uh, to drink this again. I'm also noticing there's a little bit of a citrusy quality there too so again it could be a little bit of Simcoe that's in there. There's something in my head that's telling me there might be a little bit of Simcoe in here and it's, it's on the basis of some of the other black IPAs that I've had recently but I really like how this, uh, this whole flavour goes together. It's quite if I compare it to other black IPAs, because when you taste it, you really do see it fits into that um, category pretty well. If you compare it to other black IPAs, it's very smooth and bready. Um, it de as I say, that comparing this to like a Czech Tamavi, um, it's definitely got that Czech lager breadiness to it, which is nice. But it has it has a bit of it, it really leans more towards the citrusy side of things when it comes to the fruity side of the beer. But a lovely beer, this one, and it's been cool to try it for you. So the mouthfeel of this beer, I would say... Um, yeah, mid-bodied, carbonation's really smooth. Again, you can taste the water quality in this. It comes across as quite wet. It's got a little bit of an oily quality to it, in fairness. But it comes across as very clean, like some of the Scottish beers or the Norwegian and Icelandic beers will. You can taste the quality of the water in this. Um, the malt base is really well balanced between those roasty notes, the smoothness and also a bit of sweetness. It's a very well balanced malt base in this. In terms of the hoppy bitterness or the general IBU count, I think we're talking maybe about 50 IBUs. I don't know if you'd... Would you get more than that? I think 50 is a kind of fair number in terms of the IBUs um, and that's coming both from the black malts or the roasty malts rather and the um, and the hops and you've got a nice juicy fruity quality the, to this one too. A little bit sharper in the beginning but nice and juicy the further you go into the aftertaste. Um, it's difficult to detect the booziness in this one. It covers its alcohol pretty well and overall it's just a really really quite nice and quirky black IPA. So if you enjoy the black IPA style, you are going to enjoy this one. As I say, the unique points about this are probably the, the smoothness, that Czech bready smoothness that it has and a little bit of the fruity note too. But um, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. The Black Bucket Black uh, Rye IPA coming in at 6.5% from Kinnegar Brewing in Donegal in, in, uh, in Ireland. Like, very, very nice beer and one that you definitely need to check out. So yeah, let's leave it at that for this. I really hope I can review more breweries from uh, more beers from this brewery in the future. But thank you again for watching my beer reviews. Once again, thank you to Paul for making this review possible. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Kinnegar Brewing as well. Hopefully I can review one of their IPAs in the future. I know they've got a couple of Amer more American style IPAs. I think that would be an interesting place to go after this one but hopefully you'll see this this brewery feature again on the channel thank you again for watching my reviews make sure you check out some irish craft beers if you get the chance and uh, yeah been awesome to review this one so until the next time stand you just now and i'll catch you guys later make sure you check out my social media and make sure you check out kindergar brewing from letter kenny in county donegal in ireland until the next time stand you just now and i'll catch you guys later stand you skull cheers